in this video, I just wanna share with you a few of my favorite editing tricks that I use every single time that I edit any kind of talking head or interview style setup. You may also learn a few extra editing tricks that you'll use elsewhere. So hang on for that and let's just jump straight in. All right, so this is trick number one and essentially I use this trick every single time. I call this focus on the eye and essentially what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you cut, you don't have these rough shifting focus points all over your screen and then you feel like a robot while you're watching something. When you're watching a video, you want there to be an experience. And so, for instance, let me show you kind of what I do. All right, so on this video, we were just having a two camera setup, but I only went ahead and used one camera. And essentially we're demoing this tiny little cute amp up here uh, and trying to make it seem like it's this big amp. But watch this. So this is the same camera and go ahead and watch. And when it punches in, you notice the cut. Here we go. Okay, so you notice that cut that happened right there. And I think the reason is, if you notice, the focus is his face right here. And so then as you frame forward, then the focus moves from here to over here. And so your eyes kind of just, chip, just jitter over and nobody really wants that. And so what I'd like to do is I throw in these grids and I match up where the eye is. So I already did this one, looks like. And uh, if you don't have this grid button here, click on this plus button. There's a ton of really great features in here. You can drag and drop, customize your own toolbar. Either way, use the grids, match them up. You can add grid lines, all kinds of stuff pretty easily. And so after I matched it up and just changed the position and scale, this is what it actually looks like. Let me turn that off. So you'll notice the attention just stays in the exact same spot. So I'll leave my mouse there and we'll play it again. Here we go. All right, mouse is on focus. Here we go. So that just kind of helps you to make sure that you're focused. It makes sure that you actually allow people to stay plugged into who's talking to what's happening. And like I said, for interview stuff, this is really a great way to do it is match up the eyes. In Final Cut, there's probably grids, but if there's not, just use your mouse. Your mouse will work great. Put your mouse on a spot, frame forward, put your finger on your screen, clean it off later, just whatever works for you. So trick number two is probably the one I use the most often because so frequently when you're editing, you need to duck the music, you need to duck the ambience or sound effects underneath sort of the main audio. You're sort of clearing space for that audio to exist. But if you're just thinking in the terms of volume, you're actually missing a lot of the way audio works. So this trick really isn't just for when people dive underwater, but this is where you most frequently see it. And so this scuba diver jumps underwater. I'll let you see it as it is. Wow, you can really dive. Wow, you can really dive. <laughs> okay, so obviously uh, I decided to do that audio and I really love it. So if you, if you like that, smash the like button. What a lot of people do is they'll type in low pass and they'll actually use this filtering EQ low pass, which you can drop on the clip or you can drop it in here. And essentially they'll just cut off that high end. But I don't necessarily always use this because a lot of times what you'll do is you'll pick a spot right before the audio, click on your track, then you're gonna have this uh, keyframe. So you're gonna turn on your little stopwatch, track forward to where it'll probably dip down and then set this to somewhere like 550 something like that. Then you add another keyframe, track forward just a little bit more and hit reset for the normal version of that. And here you go, this is what it sounds like. Wow, you can really dive. Wow, you can really dive. So you can tell that put a lot of emphasis on the vocal and really let it shine over the top of the music. But it was a little dead to me, so I'm actually gonna delete that low pass filter and we're gonna do it with this treble. And what you'll notice about this is it's just clearing a little bit less space off the top, so you'll still hear some of the tambourine, you'll still hear some of the jingle of the music, but the audio of the talking definitely shines through still. This can be a really easy way to do that. So let me just show you, we'll go here, we'll hit the boost, which is our way to set negative or positive treble boosting. We're gonna go down here, and then you can go as far as negative 24 dB on this. And so I like to actually go all the way down to like negative like 19 ish, which is quite a bit, but it's just the treble. So it's really not too dramatic. And then we'll do the same thing, keyframe out and go to our end of the clip and hit reset. And this is what it sounds like. Wow, 
you can really dive. Wow, you can really dive. So tip number three is something that you'll use all the time. The more you live in a social media world, you're not just making videos that are in this format of 16 by nine, but rather you'll be making videos that are nine by 16, so vertical format. Let's say I really love this clip that we just did for tip number two, but I don't wanna have to load all these same files back in, all the keyframes and all that other stuff to just make it a story. So obviously Premiere has some auto features that'll help you do this. But what I like to do is just hit Command N, which is gonna make a new sequence. So now I've got that, but all I have to do here is I can just hit and I can do Command A or Control A and then Command C. So that's just select all and then copy all. Go to vertical and then Command V, which is gonna paste that exact same thing. And then the only thing you really have to do is click on your video clip because clearly it's not big enough and scale it up. I think this will probably be a little better if I push this to the side and maybe give it a little bit more headroom. And so this is what it looks like. Wow, you can really dive. Wow, you can really dive. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And essentially this is a really easy way to make multiple cuts of a story. Uh, if you just pull in different timelines and you wanna try a story kind of morphing one way or another, or if you're moving it to vertical formats, making new sequences is a really great way to experiment with stuff without having to just hit Command Z and undo a bunch of things and eventually figure out that you undid things you wanted to keep and whatever. So making new sequences, definitely do it. If you're not doing it, start doing it. If you are doing it, good for you. Editing is one of those things that some people really love, but most people really hate. So finding ways to be really good at it, efficient at it, and be happy with the results that you make is really important. So if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe for more content like this, and if you're interested in any of the editing gear that I have, I'll leave links in the description. You can check out my monitor, laptop, keyboard, whatever else. And until next time, stay creative. See you later. Wow, you can